In the shadow of your wings I will abide forever And hear my spirit sings I will rejoice in you, my God Welcome to In the Shadow of Your Wings with Pastor John Marins of the Granby Christian Church. The Granby Christian Church desires the lost to be saved and the believer to passionately pursue Christ in all that they do. Let's join Pastor John Marins for today's message. Dear friends, in this world it seems that the wicked prosper in their evil endeavors and that the faithful, yes, the righteous fall far behind them. Aesop could relate to this feeling, this delusion. Do you sense this in what he wrote in Psalm 73? Please listen to his words, and I'll be reading from the Bible in basic English. Psalms 73, verses 2 through 4. But as for me, my feet had almost gone from under me. I was near to slipping because of my envy of the men of pride. When I saw the well-being of the wrongdoers. For they have no pain, their bodies are fat and strong. But friends, we must not fail to read these verses in context. Verse 1 of Psalms 73 says, Truly, God is good to Israel, even to such as are clean in heart. So in the blur of life, when tempted to think otherwise, we would do well to affirm these two things. God is good, and God ultimately rewards the faithful, the pure in heart. Clearly, we will see these truths revealed as we study the love story of Ruth and Boaz, our lesson for for tonight. Shall we pray? God, Jesus taught us that no one is good but you alone. Father, in the day-to-day of life during trials, how can we criticize you for what you're doing? For, Father, we cannot see at that moment what will come from your actions. So calm us down and set us on the path that leads to your home and your presence and your blessings. For, Lord, we're seeking to be clean in heart, to be pure in heart. So we're seeking your blessing as well. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Turn with me in your copy of the scriptures, if you would, to the eighth book of the Old Testament, the book of Ruth. It's four chapters in length, and it's highly prized for the beauty of the majestic story that it tells. Friends, we're about to read how God faithfully blesses the righteous. But our story also reveals that we must wait in quiet trust and obedience. Ruth 1.1 Now there came a time in the days of the judges when there was no food in the land. And a a certain man from Bethlehem, Judah, he and his wife and his two sons, went to make a living in the country of Moab. And the name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife was Naomi, and the name of the two sons were Malon and Chilion, Ephrathites of Bethlehem, Judah. And they came into the country of Moab, and they were there for some time. And Elimelech, Naomi's husband, came to his end. He died. And only her two sons were left her. And they took two women of Moab as their wives. The name of one was Orpah, and the name of the other, Ruth. And they went on living there in Moab for about ten years. And Malon and Chilion came to their end. And the woman, Naomi, was without her sons and her husbands. So she and her daughters-in-law got ready to go back from the country of Moab, for news had come to her in the country of Moab that the Lord in his mercy for his people had given them food. She went out from the place where she was, and her daughters-in-law with her, and they went on their way back to the land of Judah. And Naomi said to her daughters-in-law, Go back to your mother's houses. May the Lord be good to you as you have been good to the dead and to me. And may the Lord give you rest in the houses of your husbands. Then she gave them a kiss, and they were weeping bitterly. And they said to her, No, no. But we will go back with you to your people. But Naomi said, Go back, my daughters. 
Why will you come with me? Have I more sons in my bodies to become your husbands? Go back, my daughters. Go on your way. I'm so old now, I can't have another husband. If I said I had hopes, if I had a husband tonight and might have sons, would you keep yourselves till they were old enough? Would you keep from having husbands for them? No, my daughters, but I am very sad for you that the hand of the Lord is against me. Then again they were weeping, and Orpah gave her mother-in-law a kiss. But Ruth would not be parted from her. She was clinging to her, wasn't she? And Yomi said, See, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Go back after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, Give up requesting me to go away from you or to go back without you. For where you go, I will go. And where you take rest, I will take my rest. Your people will be my people, your God, my God. Wherever death comes to you, death will come to me. And there will be my last resting place. The Lord do so to me and more if we are parted by anything but death. And when she saw that Ruth was strong in her purpose to go with her, she said no more. So the two of them went on till they came to Bethlehem. And when they came to Bethlehem, all the town was moved about them. And they said, is this Naomi? And she said to them, don't let my name be Naomi, which means my delight, but Mara, which means bitterness. For the ruler of all has given me a bitter fate. I went out full, and the Lord has sent me back with nothing. Why do you give me the name Yomi, seeing the Lord has given witness against me? The ruler of all has sent sorrow upon me. So Naomi went back out of the country of Moab, and Ruth the Moabitess, her daughter-in-law, with her. And they came to Bethlehem in the first days of the grain cutting. Friends, when we're saying things like Naomi was saying, we need somebody to speak into our lives. God is good. God will reward. God's ways and his timing are not ours. The Almighty is never dealing with the followers of Jesus in hate. He sees the end from the beginning. He knows what's best for us. So at those times when we're speaking evil of God, we need somebody to correct us, don't we? Ruth 2.1, And Naomi had a relation of her husband, a man of wealth, of the family of Elimelech, and his name was Boaz. And Ruth the Moabite said to Naomi, Now let me go into the field and take up heads of grain after him in whose eyes I may have grace. In other words, Ruth said, Let me glean or gather up that which has been dropped or left behind by the harvesters. The law of God provided this as a way for widows and orphans to get help. It was a wonderful and thoughtful way that God had made for them. The law commanded that the corners of the fields of grain were not to be harvested by the landowners. His harvesters were to make one pass through his fields and his vineyards, and that which was left behind or dropped was designated for the gleaners. They would come and clean up the heads of grain right after the harvesters. This was their right. So Naomi said to Ruth, Go, my daughter. And she went, and she came and took up the heads of grain in the field after the cutters, and by chance she went into the part of the field which was the property of Boaz, who was of the family of Elimelech. And Boaz came from Bethlehem and said to the grain cutters, The Lord be with you. And they answered him, The Lord give you his blessing. Ruth 2.5 Then Boaz said to his servant, who was in authority over the cutters, Whose girl is this? And the servant who was in authority over the cutters said, It's the Moabite girl who came back from Moab with Naomi. And she said to me, let me come into the grain field and let me gather up grain behind the cutters. So she came and she has been here from morning till now without resting even for a minute. Then Boaz said to Ruth, give ear to me, my daughter. Do not take up grain in another field or go away from here, but keep with my young women. Keep your eyes on the field they are cutting and go after them. 
Have I not given orders to the young men not to put a hand on you? And when you're in need of drink, go to the vessels and take of what the young men have put there. Then she went down on her face to the earth and said to him, Why have I grace in your eyes that you give attention to me, seeing I am from a strange people? And Boaz answering her said to her, I've had news of everything that you have done for your mother-in-law after the death of your husband. How you went away from your father and mother in the land of your birth and came to a people who are strange to you. Now our prize text. Listen carefully. Verse 12. The Lord give you a reward for what you have done. And may a full reward be given you by the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to take cover. Then she said, May I have grace in your eyes, my Lord, for you have given me comfort, and you have said kind words to your servant, though I be not one of your servants. We'll go further in the story of Ruth next week, but for right now, let's stop and consider the words of Boaz, this wonderful promise, this wonderful blessing that he pronounces upon Ruth and Yomi. Ruth 2.12, The Lord recompense thy work. A very strong word it means to reward again. The Lord recompense thy work. A full reward be given thee of the Lord God of Israel, under whose wings you're come to trust. Friends, we can take the blessing of Boaz that he has pronounced over Ruth, and we can pronounce that same blessing over our families. This is scriptural, to take blessings and to apply them to our own lives and our families. In fact, as we draw our time together to a close, let's do that. Let me phrase for you a prayer to God. And as I give you these phrases, I'll pause for a moment so that you can, if you wish, say these same phrases back to God. We're trusting in God Almighty to do something as we pray to Him. We're trusting in God Almighty to bring the same blessing that He brought to Ruth and Naomi to our lives. Shall we pray? Almighty God, You alone have the power to bless. You alone have the power to protect. So in prayer, we come to you, Jehovah. God, you know we have been serving you. Along with our dear families, we have been seeking your word. We have been seeking your ways. We've been seeking your will. Now look upon us as we humbly kneel before you, as we come under the shadow of your protection. Almighty God, may you, Lord, please recompense the work that we our spouse and our families have offered to you by your grace. Give us, Father, we pray a full reward. Please, God. Lord God of Israel, God of Boaz, God of Ruth, God of Naomi, give us a full reward. For we too have come under your wings to trust. Father, this is our deliberate prayer to you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah. Amen. Friends, join us next week as we continue in our study of the book of Ruth. We're going to see wondrous truths that need to be applied to our lives, but this week, 
bless your family. In the name of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, bless them because you too have come under his protective wings. Amen. Thank you for listening to In the Shadow of Your Wings with Pastor John Marins of the Granby Christian Church. If you don't have a church home, they would like to invite you to join them this Sunday for morning worship at 1045. The church is located at 969 Granby Miners Road in Granby, Missouri. Have a blessed weekend and remember to abide in the shadow of his wings. I will rejoice in you, my God, in the shadow of 